<laughs> You're not so. <laughs> You're so. <laughs> but in my family, like, I've got three brothers. <laughs> Oh, no, she's not. oh, it's so amazing to see them up there. Just the confidence. It's just amazing. I, I just love it. I love it. They're all taller than me, so it doesn't work anymore. I oh, know, get off your toes. It doesn't work. You can do that too. Um, sitting on me the entire time.
Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, thanks for your support and witnessing um, our Year 8 uh, present the culmination of several months of really hard work. And thank you, Year 8. The Personal Interest Project, or PIP as we know it, is designed to help our students discover a bit more about themselves, their talents, joys, and even possibly, possibly future career choices. The students were asked to look deeply into their unfolding lives, find their passion, and work in that area with the help of a mentor, family, and teachers to create the works and performances you will see tonight and would have bared witness to as you walked around earlier. Hi, my name is Kissy, and for my pit, I chose to paint a series of paintings. In each illustration, I use water as the connecting theme to portray the intense emotion my character experiences. This shows the various stages of her emotions by submerging her deeper beneath the surface. I got inspiration from multiple artists, but the one that truly intrigued me is called Olga Krimon. It felt as if when I would look at her art, it was impossible to look away. I wanted, to, I wanted to have the same effect for my paintings, but I wasn't sure how. But then I realised the main reason her art kept drawing me in was her unique way of using reflections. As I watched videos of her paint, I noticed that whenever she made a mistake, she didn't try to fix it, she simply left it. So I followed the same process. I stopped planning out my paintings, I didn't sketch anything, I simply painted what felt right. Initially, I began to paint with confidence, but that swiftly changed. I found the first painting the most difficult, as I was unfamiliar with the size of my canvas. And I chose this theme because as someone who has grown up beside the ocean, I've always felt drawn towards the water. Its diversity can be interpreted in various ways, making it a fitting theme for my paintings. 
Spending my mornings out surfing helped me convey how I felt out in the water onto my canvas. It took time for me to realise how important it is to paint with intention and emotion. Have you ever felt that homemade pizza isn't good enough? Well, I felt the same, so I decided to build a wood fire pizza oven. Hi, my name's Orion, and today I stand before you to talk about my personal interest project, which was building a pizza oven. To some, that may sound like a daunting task, but I assure you it's worth it. Imagine the aroma of freshly baked pizza dough and the sizzle of bubbling cheese, and the satisfaction of making something so delicious. The first step to accomplishing that is to build it. Step one, planning and designing. Plan, or the foundation to any successful project lies in the planning and designing. I got a kit, so that part was already done for me. Next, we had to find a spot to put it, somewhere where there was no branches or roofs immediately above it. Step two, laying the foundation. The foundation serves as a backbone for your pizza oven. Making sure that the foundation is stable, level, and able to withstand the weight of your oven. Time and not be worked to the bone. However, only just doing two pages in colour, two pages of each chapter in colour, was still painfully painful, and outlining has permanently damaged my right wrist. Sending in my final copy to get printed was nerve-wracking because I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but receiving the final printed and binded copy was by far the best part. Being able to look through a book that I had created was a feeling that I can't describe, but... Hi everyone, my name's Omar, and I would like to introduce you to my pit. <laughs> My pit? Hold on. <laughs> Bear with me for a second. Hold on. <laughs> Still not it. Come on. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> there we go. Much better. Hey. Let's just Let's just start from the beginning. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome to my pit. My name's Omar, and I'm here to share the story of my 100% recycled shirt journey. What's the difference between kids in sweatshops and me? We're both stitching away that they're paid a whopping 15 cents an hour, and I'm doing it absolutely free. <laughs> now, I know you're probably curious about why I made a shirt. Great question. The truth is, even I'm wondering that. Same with brand name mortality. That was pretty random. But let's roll with it. I'm challenging my terrible motor skills to a sewing showdown. When I say they're terrible, it's an understatement. My handwriting is shocking. I can barely read it. It's that bad. My art skills? Let's just say even Stephen Hawking would do a better self-portrait than I would. Making a shirt seemed like the perfect plot twist to break free from my comfort zone and give those motor skills a run for their money. Good evening, my name is Shivani Eason and today I'll be talking about my artwork. For my PIP, I drew a series of intimate artworks that represent the form of how I visualise music. I chose this for my project because I saw PIP as an opportunity to improve and learn more about my passions such as art and music. Music is more than a collection of sounds. In my project, my aim was to capture the emotions and feelings expressed in lyrics and songs. I wanted to give visual form of music within my perspective. I did this by using different arrangements of techniques and textures, while my artwork stayed within the themes of surrealism. Pip has taught me the power of beauty and imperfections, uh, of imperfections within my art as well as myself. I faced many hardships along the way and my Pip journey definitely didn't go as expected. But nevertheless, I am grateful for the opportunity to share my love for music with the hope my artwork is understood and appreciated. One zero 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 one zero zero. Oh, sorry, I forgot, you people only speak English. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lucas, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my PIP, which is building a desktop computer, otherwise known as a PC. So I've got a video here, and I'm going to be narrating it the whole way through. I hope you enjoy. So, 
In step one, as you can see, I'm aligning the motherboard to the case, so then step two, I can fasten it to the case. Now, in step two, you'll see me fasten the motherboard with, to the case with four screws so that the motherboard doesn't move around. The motherboard holds up important parts like the graphics card, processor, also known as CPU, and memory. So it's important that it is firmly in place and doesn't move, move around. It also plays a big part in distributing power around the PC to the parts like the memory, hard drive, CPU, and CPU cooler. There is a little battery you might have seen that sits directly on the motherboard. That battery is always running even when the PC is off. What the battery does is make sure that the clock is always running and will always be on the correct time. The next step is installing, installing the power supply to the case with another four screws. The job of the power supply is to distribute power around the PC to all the parts, such as the fans, motherboard, graphics card and memory. There is a power input socket on the side of it, and that's where you plug the power cable into, and that power cable plugs into the power board. Now, on step four, is where I manage the cables behind the back panel of the PC with some Velcro straps. This doesn't help with the overall performance of the PC, but just improves the overall look and makes it a little nicer and easier to access when I'm upgrading in the future. Good evening, parents, students, teachers, and teachers, my bad. Like all other presentations tonight, I'll be talking about the last six months I've spent working on my PIP. For my PIP, I chose to recycle old surfboards with dings and scratches and fix them back to shape. Since the beginning, I knew I wanted to incorporate my passion for surfing into my PIP. I love to surf, and I do so whenever I get the chance. So I knew this idea would teach me lots of valuable lessons and skills I would need in the future. I began working on my PIP at a steady pace and I found a mentor within the first few weeks. The mentor I chose was Bo. Bo is one of my old teachers who taught me in year six. Over the short period of time we spent together, we bonded over the love of the sport. He was a perfect man for my PIP idea as he had years of experience surfing and fixing boards. I messaged him and we agreed to meet up and start discussing a plan. A few days later, I got the idea to look, on, to look for second-hand boards on Facebook Marketplace. That is where I found my first board. I chose this board because I was looking to fix a short board and I ended up getting it for only 20 bucks. Bo and I worked for hours over the course of three days on this board. He taught me how to fix the holes and sand it down till it was no longer visible. Then we painted on my chosen design and it was finally ready. Hello. Hello. Hi. One second. Okay guys, uh, picture this, picture this. Um, a fully functioning uh, electric guitar that is like completely playable, super cool and amazing, but built solely out of like recycled Lego bricks. Um, that is a nice thought, but it's too bad it didn't work out. Anyway, um, hi, my name is Noah, and I'm here to, um, I'm a musician, uh, but I also love to make art and build complex things out of Lego. Today I'm here to, and today I'm here to tell you how I combine the two. For me, the best way to combine like my favorite things, Lego, art, music, uh, was for me to build like an art piece guitar that matches the other guitar that I built previously with my mentor, Shai. Uh, my mentor, Shai, he's an amazing person, truly, and I think he was just a perfect person for this PIP project. Um, the focus of this build was to recycle my Lego from home, so nearly all of it is Lego, Lego from my boxes at home. Not, not the only pieces, that, sorry. The only pieces I bought were pieces for the decoration of the guitar. I first got into Lego at the age of four and, when I, and got into the music at the age of five. After that, I basically just continued with both. The idea for the guitar came to me as I was talking to my mentor, Shai. He was leaving our house like after our first meeting and after our first uh, pit meeting and I was thinking about Lego music, uh, as in music as in my band, 
uh, and Pip at the same time. Then it came to me like I had a lot of unused Lego at my house and I hadn't built something challenging for a while. So I decided to build my electric guitar for my Pip. Now I would like to have a short list of people who I would like to thank for my project and all the help they've given me. One second, guys. <laughs> firstly, um, um, uh, firstly, I'd like to say a big, big thank you to my mentor, Shai. He's a truly amazing person by heart and just like a great guy, generally. You know what I don't like about trees? They're way too big. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ollie, and tonight I'm going to share with you my pit and what I learnt along the way. Now, can I get a quick show of hands as to who knows what a bonsai is? What you may not know is that some bonsai can cost millions of dollars. Although the Japanese word bonsai literally translates to a tree in a pot, over the centuries it has gained, gained a much greater meaning. The ultimate goal of growing a bonsai is to create a miniaturised living representation of nature in the form of a tree or landscape. This is achieved by using special wiring and pruning techniques formed over time by ancient masters. A few years ago when we were renovating our house, Dad decided to put on Karate Kid for a Friday night movie. I was intrigued by Mr Miyagi's bonsai and began reading books on the subject. I've been interested in bonsai ever since then, but this is the first time I've been able to put it into action. When the pip was first introduced to our class, the first thing that came to mind was composing and performing a piece of music on my violin, which I love playing. Then I thought of bonsai, and after much consideration, the idea of making a bonsai forest, a big pot to complement it, and a display stand to show off the rest of my bonsai trees. I was delighted to have easily found the perfect pottery mentor, Vanessa, within a couple of days. She was very supportive and spent many cold winter nights in her art studio, shaping and rolling out the clay with me. Over a six week period, we had designed and made a successful prototype and begun the actual pot into a Japanese bonsai garden. Over the next four months, Chris and I had many phone calls and FaceTime chats, and each time I learned something new that I could take, or something new about bonsai that I could take away and work on my pit with. Hi, hi, my name is Rumi, and today I'm going to talk about my pit. My original idea was to buy some used shoes, clean them, and sell them for more, then get some more shoes, do the same thing, and so on. After thinking for a bit, I decided that that would be a kind of boring project and also really repetitive. So I, thought, so I thought about what I needed and what materials would be easy to get. After thinking for a little while, I decided to make a desk because my old one was really, really small and had, I had taken like half of it apart to make it easier to do things on. Also, I had nowhere near enough space to, to make music and play around with musicy stuff. First things first, I had to make a design. I thought that an L-shaped desk would look really cool. Anyway, now I had to think about where, I, where to get the wood from. I thought that a good place to get the wood from would be the Mullum Slab Factory. My dad, told, my dad told me about this place and said that they had really big pieces of wood. So I, did, so I bought one, so I bought a slab, but a slab is not a desk. So I would have to cut sand, oil, and put the legs on. So after a few weeks of negligence, I finally let it see the sun before cutting it up and putting it in a nail shape. Then I realized that I really, really didn't like this design. So I decided to make a normal desk with the L-shaped part as a monitor stand on top. After a few weeks, wait, a few weeks later, I bought some legs. Before I put the legs on, I had to sand them. So I sanded them with my mentor, Shamai. He's a painter and I thought that he would be really that he would be able to really help me that he would be able to really help me. I learnt that there's a big difference between painting and building a desk. But he still really helped me throughout the whole thing. After sanding, I thought that I would be done soon. That's when my dad decided to tell me that I can't just drill legs on without a truss because that 
means that they'll probably just snap. So I went to Bunnings a week before the project was due and set out to buy some wood for a truss. I looked at some treated pine, but the old guy who worked there told me that if I got treated pine in my room, I would probably die. So he instead told me that to get some pre-made metal legs that were in aisle seven. So I bought them and worked, and they worked out really well. Thank you, team two. Round of applause. We have a video from Sam, who's currently overseas with his family, um, but he has made an epic surfboard. We have it here as well to present. Uh, can't hear me, is this better? Okay, thank you. Uh, so we've got a video from Sam, who's overseas. He can't be here at the moment, but he'd love to still uh, share his pip with us. by a car? Well, mine has, twice. Hi, my name is Liam and I built a letterbox for my pit because first my friend backed into it and then my dad did. And now it's mounted. If you're too old to know what mounted means, it means destroyed. Um, for my pit, I was originally going to rebuild a dirt bike engine, but I discovered it would be too expensive and take too long. So I started by looking for other ideas. I thought of doing a shelter for my gym equipment but that was also going to be too expensive and take too long. Then one day, my mum and I were standing next to our mounted letterbox, 
and we came up with the idea to build a new one. I, I thought that was a good idea, as it was affordable and simple. So where to start? I had to get some ideas on what kind of letterbox I was going to make. I looked online and saw a bunch of cool letterbox ideas. And I went around looking at other people's letterboxes. But I got my idea from a book on designing houses. Really, a letterbox is just like a little house. Uh, I, thought I, could, I thought that could be a good idea, as it was simple and I could make it big enough to fit parcels in it. So I started by asking Tony if he would mentor me and help me build it. He said we can get started as soon as possible, but first I had to find supplies. Hi, my name is Izzy, and today I'll be taking you guys on the journey that I went through to build this fish tank. At first, I was going to build a billy cup, but I had trouble finding a mentor, and by the time I had an idea of a mentor, I realised I wouldn't have enough time to get all the resources and then build it. So I decided that I needed to find another project. Since I moved, since I moved here, I have been really into fishing and I, and I decided that I wanted to use this opportunity to explore the world of fish and aquatic nature in more depth. After discussing this idea with my family, I decided that it would be a fun, exciting and doable experience to set up a fish tank in the amount of time I had left. This now brought me to my next hurdle. This was finding a fish tank. I was doing my research and all of the fish tanks cost over $200 and my budget was $200. That's when my mum miraculously found a fish tank for the perfect size for only $10 at an shop. shop. And my process on making this project happen. When I was thinking about pip ideas, jewellery was one of my first thoughts. I've always admired the bright coloured beaded necklaces you find at markets or shops, but they were always so expensive. And I loved the idea of making my own and designing them just the way I wanted. I went on my phone and scrolled through the internet, looking for inspiration and easy ideas I, I could attempt to recreate. I got more and more excited about the project when I came across so many cool ideas and techniques I could learn. I decided making beaded jewellery would be my pit after my mum showed me all her cool beads and right away we ordered the essentials for starting. While I was looking for a mentor, I got reminded that my neighbour actually makes jewellery and helped her daughter with her own pit. So we got things organised and I got myself a mentor, Steffi. Hello, my name is Gracie and I am here to talk to you about my personal interest project, or PIP. For my PIP, I decided to do a large scale painting. I have many ideas when thinking about what to do for my PIP, such as character design, a comic book, or a small animation. I knew I was going to do something artistic and creative, giving me the idea to paint. This is one of the biggest paintings I have ever created and also one of the most challenging because of its size and detail. I originally started off with oil paint, but stopped once I realised how slowly it dries and the fact it may not dry in time for presentation, because of the multiple paint layers I had to apply. I instead switched to acrylic paint. My, my painting represents manipulation and people using you, knowing that they will almost always get what they want from you. I named my painting Broken Angel. Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I love the ocean and so I decided to make a this is much harder than I thought because sewing swimwear material is not like sewing normal material. The material stretches when you try and sew it and goes wherever it wants, making it hard to keep to shape. I made two different bikinis, one of them a reversal and the other a tie-up. I also designed a logo, screen printed it onto tags and t-shirts. Finally went to Christmas Beach and, and did a photo shoot showing my swim, swimmers and t-shirts being worn. Something I learned along the way is that when you are cutting out material, you have to measure correctly and add an extra bit. I got very good at unpicking during this process. <laughs> doing the journal was probably my favourite part of PIP. I would like to thank my mentors Sue and Anna for helping me along the way. Overall, I enjoyed most of it and I'm happy with what I've created. Today, 
I'll be talking about how with the help of my five mentors, I learned to weld. What was the process leading up to this point? Well, for one, I have a quite extensive family history in welding. My great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather ran a metalwork business in Sydney nearly 100 years ago. Plus, I've always been connected to metal from the tip. Whenever I'd go to the tip when I was younger, before my mum had even stopped the car, I would have jumped out and be climbing all over the rusty metal. Luckily, I never got tetanus. My pip includes. Well, at first, I was going to do some weird weapon things, but that got shut down pretty quick. Next, I thought, life-size metal human sculpture. One, I couldn't find a mentor, and for two, I didn't have, to have enough experience with what I was doing. Next, I thought, let's make a frog habitat. Kind of a big leap, right? I'd got that done in about two weeks, but I didn't really like it. So I decided, let's go with welding. Hi, I'm Helena. And for my pit, I made a lizard enclosure for my pet lizard bunny. I decided to make this because my old one was falling apart, and I'm pretty sure that we both thought it was time for a makeover. I found the process quite challenging, and I'm going to tell you a bit about it. My mentor was Simon Lawson, who has a business that recycles architectural building materials called North Coast Architectural Salvage. I found it quite hard to get started because the first couple of meetings we had, we just talked about the structure and the design. When we finally designed it, we went to Wooden Revival to get the recycled timber, but they didn't have the right size, which was so annoying. So we just had to get the best pieces of timber and we used some of my dad's offcuts. Started putting it together. After a Hello everybody. As most of you probably know, my name is Sage. Today I will be telling you about my personal interests which for pretty much my whole life has been bikes, and in this case, a motorized bike. My love for bikes started when I was around one or two years old. I had a little push bike that my mum used to push me around on. I've always been on bikes since then. When I was around five or six years old, I got my first motorbike. It was a little 60cc motorbike, and I fell in love with it. Around two years ago, I got my first proper race bike. I've had a couple of little pit bikes in the time that I got my first bike up to now. At the moment, I have, a, I have an 85cc race bike. At the time of pit, my bike broke down. And I was going to rebuild the engine for my project, but that didn't end up happening as it was going to be way too time consuming and cost way too much. After that, I was quite lost on what to do until I, ha until I had the idea to fix up an old mountain bike as I have been wanting one to ride around in town and stuff. I have to give most of my credit to my mentor, Roscoe. Without him, this bike would not be the same and not even close to as good. I could not do it without him. Thank you guys so much for listening. Have an amazing night. Um, next up, Jasper. Hi, my name is Jasper. Have you ever needed an odd-shaped metal object? No, me neither. But I decided to make a forge anyway. I'm, I'm not a very motivated person, so one of the biggest challenges for me was actually starting and staying on topic. When I, um, I, I had the idea at first to make a furnace because I've done some jewelry in the past and I've always wanted to melt things for some reason. When I first started my pip, I didn't realize just how long it would take to get all the materials I needed, like all the cement, sol um, solder, and insulation. I started some sand casts with solder, which is a very low temperature metal. If you get a thin piece, you can melt it with a normal lighter. So I went to pick it up. It was an old Coca-Cola keg. I thought it might be too small, but oh well. I decided to work at my dad's workshop. We sent the body of the furnace to a steel workshop to get it cut and welded. I sealed and screwed two pieces of wood onto the bottom and sides of the furnace. I lined the inside of the keg with ceramic insulation and poured a refractory cement in around a PVC pipe. Unfortunately, the pipe got stuck. Uh, and when I poured in the other side, I tried to use some WD-40 to keep it from sticking. Because everyone knows WD-40 can unstick anything. Well, almost. 
Hi, my name's Jyoti, and today I'm going to share with you my personal interest project. I decided to follow my passion for crocheting and make some clothes, because I really do love to crochet. I mean, yeah, there are some points where I get really bored, but overall I find it very fun and enthralling. It amazes me that I can make so many different creations with just a ball of yarn. For my pip, I made a few pieces of clothing, starting off with a triangle top I made up myself by honestly just making a really big granny square and attaching strings to it. But the problem is that it's very see-through, so probably best to wear over swimmers. Next, I made a simple striped green and white singlet that I actually learned how to make from a YouTube tutorial. I also made a cat beanie from the help of my lovely mentor, Gypsy. Last of all, I made another top. It was actually originally meant to be a dress, but I didn't end up having enough time. I'm quite happy with the stuff I've made and will definitely make some more clothes in the future. My mentor is actually one of my friend's sisters that I met when I was hanging out at their house. I talked to Gypsy and she showed me some of the stuff she made. She offered to be my mentor and I agreed, excited. I've been crocheting for nearly two years and I used to sell little plush keychains that I made to my younger friends. Thanks again, you wrote, and thank you all for coming. Uh, well done, guys. Can we give them another round of applause? And uh, as the guardian that uh, actually wasn't here while all the hard work was being done, I'd like to give a big thank you to April for stepping up during this time while I was away. <laughs> and to Matthew for the extraordinary amount of uh, organisation, support, love, care and everything else that you and April and Ty have been uh, giving the students throughout this time. So that's it for our program tonight. We'll leave the, you have you've got about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to have a look around while we pack down. Uh, and then you two can go home and perhaps watch the Matildas win, hopefully. Um, but well done, students. You did an incredible job. It was so lovely to see your passions come to life through your pit projects. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, was that all right? <laughs>